With the advent of iPads and iPads, iPhones, it might even be on Android, but I'm not sure. But there's one thing that I use a lot, which is FaceTime. It's a great way to kind of mock up some stuff without having to open up Photoshop. But when you just need to do a quick mock up or kind of throw something together, or if you're just, you don't have Photoshop, Facetune is a great way to go. You can edit the photos and make them as professional as possible. And I'm going to show you how to use it right now. Okay, first things first, once you have Facetune installed, go ahead and open it. I've got it installed right here at the top. And go ahead and open up a photo that you have not edited, or maybe you might have done a little cleanup in Photoshop or whatnot, but it doesn't really matter. And then open up one. I'm going to... Now, the one thing it's always going to show is very large image if you took it on a DSLR camera. Um, I'm going to use recommended size because it's a lot faster and it keeps Facetune stable, but you can use maximum size. I have an iPad 3 and it seems to be do all right with it, um, but recommended size is perfectly fine. Um, and it looks great uh, if you're putting it on the web and whatnot like that. So, I've got an image here. This is untouched. This is just a picture I took. First things first. There's a, there's a row of icons here at the bottom, and it's canvas, white and smooth, details, reshape, patch, tones, red eye, defocus, filters, and frames. What we're going to do is, you can mess with the canvas first and make a couple changes if you want. You can crop it or put it at a fixed ratio, 4x3, 3x2, uh, which is standard, 6x10, um, 16x9 if you want to go for that movie aesthetic. Um, but basically, I usually leave that for last. Let's just go ahead and go to whiten and just do a little bit of whitening. Nobody's teeth are perfect. So we'll just do a little whitening right from the get-go. Looks good. You don't have to go too crazy. Basically all you're doing is, is tapping the whiten button and it whitens it. And then go to the smoothing tool. I use the smoothing tool before I use the patch tool because you can smooth a lot of things out before patching it. Now you want to go with the lines of the face. Other, and you don't want to get too crazy. Now the default settings usually will do you fine, but you can always hit the brush if you want to, you know, up the size. I wouldn't go past too far past half on skin, but uh, you can change the size of the brush if you want. And then you hit brush button again and it goes away. And basically, just kind of go with the flow. Remember, we're trying to make people look normal. We're not trying to make them look like the cover of a magazine because the cover of a magazine makes people look people makes them look fake. So you just do a basic cleanup, just kind of go around the edges, don't get too crazy, you know, maybe a little under the eyes and stuff. On kids, you barely want to touch it, but this, I'm just going to smooth out his little face here, and uh, maybe a little around the edges, nothing too crazy. Now, um, the top right is always to accept it and then you're done. So now you can see in the bottom right here it always shows you what it looked like before and after. So before, after, before, after. Now details. One thing I like to do with details a lot, first things first, real quick, I always do details on the clothes. It, it kind of puts the face in contrast, makes it all look kind of real, uh, makes it pop, and then I always do hair, definitely. Once again, stroke with the hair you know don't keep it nice and simple don't overdo it it's just enough to kind of keep things clean and I always do earring and jewelry and stuff but you you know you don't want to do it multiple times especially if they have de uh, details and buttons always look good when you detail them a little bit and you can see like in this before after before after it just kind of makes the clothes pop a little bit and then accept. Oh, one other thing that I do with details, I do this every time, is getting close on the faces. Don't ever do the teeth or the nose or the ears, um, but I always do the eyes a little bit. Just one swipe through. And the, if they're wearing glasses, I'll do a little bit on the glasses. And with kids, I'll do the eyes and the eyebrows sometimes. Um, and there we go. Now, the reshaping tool is the next one to the right. And I usually just use this just to kind of, just to do very minor things to kind of bring symmetry. Um, you don't want people's faces to totally change or anything. But if you want to bring a little symmetry, 
you definitely can um, with this tool. Once again, you don't want to make people not look like who they are. But it's okay if you want to add a little symmetry to their face. Um, that might have, went, it might have gone a little too far there. There we go. And there we are. Less is more with the reshaping tool. And then, patch tool. There's not a lot to patch here, but it's pretty simple. Basically, you just tap where you want to patch. And then slide this till it matches pretty good. And then in the bottom right, this red button is to accept that one patch so you can keep patching. Because if you just do acceptance on all of them, then you can't keep patching. And you just go through that real quick here. Um, he looks good. And there we are. And you can do like, I can show you what it really looks like. See, I can take that to the side and see how I can just patch out those spots. I mean, I wouldn't care about a pumpkin, but you can definitely do it to faces, and you can do it multiple times in the same area. So there we go. Patching. Tones. Now, tones is something that you can do. You can add things like makeup and stuff. If you look on their website, they show you how to use it. I never use the tones because I always feel like it makes people look fake. Um, the defocus. I'm using a particular lens that automatically defocuses the background, but if you click on it, you can defocus things in the background. Um... Here, I'll do it on something that's a little more obvious. Like this, you can see how this gets blurry. Yeah. Um, when you don't want to accept something, you can always hit the top left X, and there it goes. It goes away. Now, here's my favorite part, the filters. If you click on the filters, you can bring the filters up. Now, one thing I do first is I always do lighting, okay? So, my big ones are the S-curve, the sigmoid, the gamma, and if it's outside, I'll use the cross B a lot, um, especially if it's like fall or summer. Um, I'll use the cross A a lot of times during winter. But for this, um, the gamma would be really good since it's nice and bright outside. Bringing your finger left brings it, turns it off basically, and then bringing it to the right, gamma 100. Now you never want to do anything at 100. I usually do everything around 20 and 30. You can always do it multiple times. And then accept in the bottom right here. Do another lighting. We'll do a cross B. Bring that down to about 21. Alright. And then we'll do a then we'll do a paper. Paper's always really nice. It gives that kind of it kind of normalizes the picture. It brings everything out. Now, my favorites, indigo, copper. Um, the sapphire looks really good. Oh, orchid I use a lot for outside. Look how great this looks outside. Alright, we'll use the orchid. And then maybe I might even do a little bit of the pastel too, just to kind of pop things a little bit. And there we go. And accept. And there we are. Now it's finished. Okay, so, there's frames as well, but frames always look a little cheesy to me. But you can add frames. Um, just like that. Or you can just frame it yourself when you get home. Um, once you print it out. So, now that it's done, you can see before, after. Before, after. Nice, looks very professional, and it was just taken with a basic DSLR. Um, I didn't have a full lighting kit or anything like that. I basically just took the shot where I was. Um, and then I always click in the top right and click Save to Camera Roll. Um, I click Save to Camera Roll because if you just go share to Facebook, then people see that you are using Facetune because it goes uploaded via Facetune. Um, and you can pull it out of there. Um, here's the one we just did, I think. There it is. Uh, yep, and then you can just basically click that there and upload to Facebook or Flickr or Twitter or whatnot. Or you can print it or use it as a wallpaper. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to change that, change my wallpaper. I'm going to set the home screen to that. Um, there we go. Well, Facebook, that wraps up our tutorial for using Facetune for the iOS. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, please, please subscribe. Also, feel free to like and comment below. I'll try to answer them as I see fit. And if you see any issues with this video or you think there's anything I could do better, let me know. I'll take a look and we'll just move forward from there.